Hi everybody, this is Pat from Feed Your Brain and today have I got a video for you guys. It is time to talk about the great explorer Jacques Cartier himself. So without further ado, it's time to set sail, so get on board, we're going right now. Very little is known about the life of this Saint-Malo navigator before 1532. It is certain that he must have ventured on the seas from a very young age. Some historians believe that he may have accompanied Verrazzano on his expeditions of 1524 and 1528, but this hypothesis remains disputed. It is, however, generally accepted that Cartier had already come to America before his expedition of 1534. Indeed, the Bishop of Saint-Malo, Jean Le Veneur, stated in a letter to the King of France that Cartier had already sailed in Brazil and in Newfoundland. King François I thus chose Cartier to take command of a great expedition to the New World. His mission was to discover new lands and riches as well as a sea passage to China. Now, this might not sound like something amazing to you living now in the modern age, but back then it was an extraordinary endeavor. It was amazing. It would be the equivalent today of leaving for a voyage to Mars or, or to Neptune. It was an extraordinary endeavor. These guys were heading straight into the unknown. It's quite a feat. Cartier left the port of Saint-Malo on April 20th, 1534, with two ships and 61 crew members. The weather conditions were excellent, and he completed his ocean crossing in just 20 days. The first places he visited in Newfoundland were already known and named, so he headed for the Gulf of Saint Laurent, navigating along the west coast of Newfoundland. The barren land he saw inspired him with nothing but contempt. It was, he wrote, the land that God had given to Cain. On June 12 or 13, he caught a glimpse of natives on the island, probably Beotsuk. On June 26, Cartier reached the Madeleine Islands and at first mistakenly believed that he had reached the continent. On the evening of June 29, he saw a land that seemed more pleasant to him. It was what we now call Prince Edward Island. On July 7, in Chaleur Bay, he came into contact with the Micmac, and the exchanges were very friendly. He reached Gaspé Bay on July 14. It was there that he first met a group of about 200 Iroquoians and their leader, Donacona. They did not inhabit the Gaspésie Peninsula, they were only there to hunt and fish during the summer months. The first contacts were very friendly. The natives were welcoming and eager to trade. Gifts were exchanged and an alliance was concluded, which was followed by dancing and festivities. On July 24, Cartier erected a large 30 feet high wooden cross on which appeared the arms of France, which is to say three fleurs de lys. The purpose of this was to officially take possession of this territory in the name of France. This cross displeased Chief Donacona. He approached Cartier's boat by canoe with his brother and three of his sons to express his disagreement. The French forced the natives aboard the boat, where Cartier reassured them, explaining that the cross was only a navigation beacon and nothing more. 
Yeah, that was a lie. It would be so interesting to know what Donna Connor thought exactly, if only he had left some sort of writing testimony. But sadly, the natives back then, in this part of the New World, had no writing system. Cartier obtained permission to bring Domagaya and Tangyoangyi, two of the chief's sons, with him back to France, promising to bring them back on his next visit. This was followed by festivities and a feast, and then Cartier set sail on July 25th. He went back up into the Gulf and mistakenly believed that the 40 miles that separated the Gaspé Peninsula from Anticosti Island was only a large bay and the island was simply a peninsula. What Cartier did not know at that time is that he had just missed the entrance to the Saint Laurent River, which he would find on his following voyage with the help of the two natives that he had guiding him, but that's for the next video. Despite having found no gold or precious metals, Cartier remained optimistic that a sea passage to the west existed somewhere in this gulf. In France, the two natives, who were learning French, confirmed Cartier's hopes. The king therefore decided to give the navigator the opportunity to complete his explorations the following year. And that's exactly what we'll be talking about in our next video. You don't want to miss that one. So that's it for today, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. As usual, if you did, subscribe to our channel, leave a comment below. It's always a pleasure to hear from you guys, and I hope to see you real soon. Au revoir.